what's up guys coach Bobby here going to go over a typical Saturday schedule for me uh, in terms of what I eat um, and I talked about it um, on Friday how going into a weekend your plan is not really to build muscle unless you work out or lose fat so for the most part which we're trying to have every day count every day matter so we want to always be moving toward our goal, uh, moving forward and progressing. So we want to have days that we win, that we either build muscle that makes our body leaner uh, for the long-term benefit in terms of increasing our metabolism, or we want to be um, have our body in an environment where it is depleted of glycogen and able and ready to oxidize and burn fat for energy. So um, when you lay your week out, you want to make sure that you, number one, um, schedule your training, as I've talked about uh, in several videos, uh, and also line up the days that you plan to have your, your body um, fast um, and be depleted of, ox of uh, oxygen, of um, glycogen, so that it can burn fat. All right, so that's for the week, but we all know how challenging the weekends are. So it's difficult to plan for a weekend day to be an, an extra, especially if you're busy, if you have kids, if you have activities, if you work really hard during the week, you don't wanna necessarily have to have, you know, part of your weekend devoted to exercise, um, which I'll get into in a minute, because I think you should, um, but it's hard to, count a weekend um, weekend day Saturday or Sunday as a uh, strength building muscle building or fat burning day uh, especially fat burning strength building we can probably do and I do uh, but fat burning is difficult so what I plan to do going into a weekend is basically to hold serve right to hold serve and and put my body in a position where I don't get fatter right where I don't have any situations where my body is maximized or maxed out in capacity for glucose and glycogen storage. So as I've said before, that's half the battle guys, is making sure that we don't have periods throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year where our bodies are forced to store body fat, right, because of our glycogen storage levels. So uh, knowing that and knowing that I purposely um, enter into my nutrition things I enjoy to eat right carbohydrate in particular uh, that I enjoy so that I don't get into a, get to a point where I'm craving it and then eat like crazy um, and I and I and I suggest you guys do that that you guys schedule the things that you like to eat right bread pasta rice candy and sweets if you will as well but make sure that you schedule those so that you number one have them in periods of time where your body um, can use them if not at least not be hindered and harmed by them um, and then so your body won't ever get into this state where it craves a certain food item uh, incessantly where you just have to have it so it's important to plan that so Friday we go over I went over kind of how I go into my Friday nights knowing that I have typically a Friday night football game to go to so I'll train Friday morning I'll fast longer than usual and then I have a protein shake before I go to the game knowing I'm gonna have some uh, carbohydrates that are not gonna be beneficial so instead of pretending that I won't eat it I make sure that I eat less of it and have a empty or almost empty glucose tank so that when I do have the carbohydrates the candy the hot dogs uh, the soda whatever it is I don't go over capacity and put my body into a fat storage mode okay so Saturday so that's that's in part because I know Saturday I'm going to go out and train so most Saturdays I do a bonus boot camp so if you know you're gonna train a day then you can plan number one you can plan activities or or carbohydrate eating events after that knowing that you're gonna get that glycogen levels lower uh, but you can also plan them after a glycogen increase event right not because it's gonna fix if you go over but you know that if if you're going to for example if I'm gonna have Saturday and Sunday still in front of me 
where I might potentially eat carbohydrates, I probably will. And I'm already gonna be having an increased amount on Friday night. If I know Saturday morning I have a workout coming, then, I, then I'm not as, as fearful of having two days to manage my glycogen levels, right? If I go over Friday night, the workout on Saturday won't fix that. That fat storage is gonna be gone and already stored in body fat. And the next day's workout will only be minimizing or, de or depleting the glycogen, right? So we, we still don't wanna go over capacity with glucose and glycogen on Friday night, any night. Um, but knowing that, knowing that I have a Saturday workout and knowing that I have Saturday afternoon for my son's football game probably, or Sunday, and then Sunday afternoon to watch NFL football and knowing that I'm gonna probably be eating things and moving less after the workout for a day and a half and the potential for my glycogen level to go up, that would have been a, a scary proposition if I um, maxed out my glycogen storage levels on Friday and then didn't have any way of decreasing it before Monday, if that makes sense. So knowing that I have Saturday as an opportunity to bring those glycogen levels back down so I can enjoy Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon, that makes it um, okay in some ways for me to indulge in carbohydrates on Friday night because I know that as long as I don't go over and force my body to store fat, I'll be okay because I'll be minimizing it again the next day. All right. So most Saturdays are are of this makeup that I'm going to give you. So it's probably closer to most people who work out in the mornings schedule than my daily schedule, right? Because I train uh, usually about 10:30 uh, or so to noon, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. After my morning work is done, my morning classes. Most people who have nine to five jobs either go before work or they go after work. So the ones who train in the morning, um, like those who come to my class, this, my Saturday schedule is closer to what I would suggest they do when they train, okay? So I get up uh, typically on a Saturday for a 8 a.m. class, uh, I'll get up at 6 a.m., right? To get ready, to get my game face on, to shave my head, you know, I take it very seriously, so I'm getting up and getting ready. I'm not getting up at 7. I don't get up at 7.15 and just rush, rush to the gym and just give them, you know, just whatever I have. I make sure that I prepare mentally to make sure I'm the best coach possible. So I get up at 6 a.m., and first thing I do, uh, as all, all mornings, is I do keto water first, 20 to 24 ounces of water, and then I'll do my keto OS, my ketone, exogenous ketone, uh, supplement so that's at about 6 6 15 all right so I'll drink that um, either all of it or most of it uh, before I leave to go to my workout to my class now Saturdays I participate so my workout is going to take take place within two hours of me waking up which is similar to people who train before work right so you have to have energy and fuel in your body to work out, right? So if you're not taking an exogenous ketone supplement, then you're probably living on glycogen or glucose. So I suggest to people, in order to have a great workout, you have to have something in your bloodstream that's glucose that gives your body gas for the workout, right? So some, some great examples are fruit, apples, bananas, uh, whole grain toast with peanut butter, uh, things that are not gonna make you too full or you might have stomach problems, uh, but give you enough blood sugar and glucose in your system so that you can work hard and, and get through the workout and break down muscle tissue and build this lean muscle machine that's gonna help you long-term wise. Again, your best asset toward weight management is your body, right? Is your muscle, your lean muscle. So we're gonna make sure that line one on our list is to make sure that we get a great workout. And that's not possible if you don't have any energy. All right, so for me, I don't need glucose, I don't need uh, carbs in my system because I give my body ketones. And that is what my body uses. Your body can use glucose or ketones. So 6 a.m. I get up, I have my 20 to 24 ounces of water, I immediately follow that up with exogenous ketones. Right, I'll drink that for about an hour as I'm getting ready. Before I leave the door, I will ref refill my, my shaker bottle, right, my shaker bottle. I'll have a little bit left of the ketones, usually. 
and I'll add uh, a scoop of, of branched chain amino acids, BCAs, um, and water, right? Back, back to my drink. So now um, from 7.30, right, when I leave, uh, before my workout and and throughout the workout and I'll have some after the workout usually I'll do my BCA's drink and that's no different than when I train during the week where I start my BCA drink uh, at about 930 right midway through my 9 a.m. class and I'll finish it after my workout so the only difference is is because there's no there's not much of a window between wake up and workout I don't do my BCA, I'm sorry, I don't do my uh, Bulletproof Coffee, right? And I may do it later on some Saturdays, but most Saturdays I won't even do my coffee. Again, I'm not trying to, the, the purpose of the coffee um, in large part is to extend our fasting window, right? And since Saturday is not really meant to be a, a oh, it's not, not really meant, it's not meant to be a fat burning day, then I'm not as conscientious or cognizant about fasting or using uh, tools like the Bulletproof Coffee to extend my fast. I still use the ketones because my body needs a fuel source and I don't want to give it unnecessary carbs if I don't have to, um, but I, I don't do the Bulletproof Coffee. So I do my 6 a.m. water, ketones, uh, 7.30 until about 9.30 or 10, I'll drink my BCAs right before the workout during the workout and after the workout all right so now we're at a window of about 10 a.m. until whenever right and Saturday and, and Sunday are my wild card days right so what I do typically is I will come home and I will weigh myself after my Saturday workout and based on how hard I worked out how much I ate Friday night um, how, how well I fasted Friday afternoon, all those components will dictate what the scale says and that's going to determine how I act nutrition-wise for the rest of Saturday, right? Typically, I'll, I'll come home and immediately have something that I enjoy, right? Our, our go-to meal with, with, our, with our kids is we'll do breakfast bagels after uh, our Saturday boot camp. And I'll do two usually, and I'll do whole grain if they have it, uh, but if they don't, I'll do just regular plain bagels. And I'll try to, as always, I'll try to make sure even when I have carbs, I will increase the ratio of protein and fat to carbs, right? That dilutes the amount of glucose that is pushed into your bloodstream quickly. So your body won't react as quickly, releasing as much insulin into your system and pushing as much glucose out of your bloodstream. Which will react, which will make your body react negatively, and then you'll think you're, it'll think you're hungry again. For example, if you come home and have a candy bar, or have um, just a bagel by itself, where the ratio of, of of carbs to other is very high, your body will see a large amount of carbohydrates or glucose in the bloodstream. It will release a large amount of insulin, which will push all of that glucose into storage right your body thinks the blood the blood sugar is too high and you're gonna die so it reacts by releasing insulin pushing all that blood sugar out of the bloodstream what that means is all of a sudden your body has a drop in blood sugar and your body releases hormones that make you want to eat to save to save itself so a half hour later after eating a bagel you're hungry again so it's important to be mindful of that that when you do have carbohydrates, to make sure that you fill the plate or the meal or the item with enough other things, mainly protein, that's going to dilute the amount of carbohydrates or glucose that is released into your bloodstream. So your body doesn't react so negatively to that. So we come home and we have um, bagels, breakfast, breakfast bagels. I have, um, again, whole grain if possible, uh, but if not, I'll get plain. I'll do uh, bacon and egg or sausage and egg, and I'll have them add spinach to it. And I like mayonnaise on oh mine. So uh, again, the egg and the bacon adds protein and some fat to uh, a meal that without it would be almost all carbs, all sugar, all glucose. So it reduces the impact. 
Uh, I'll drink that with the remainder of my BCAs if I, have, if I have any left, or I'll have water or maybe a Coke Zero with that. Um, again, this is all um, depending on how hard I worked, uh, maybe if I've already weighed in afterwards what I weighed, uh, but usually I've done enough work um, Friday, Friday's workout, Friday's fast. Uh, I went up quite a bit sometimes with the candy at the football game, uh, but then Saturday, uh, I didn't put any more glycogen in my body or glucose. I had ketones only. I worked out. I burned through much of that glucose, hopefully. Now I'm in a position most Saturdays where my tank is maybe, my G tank, my combined glucose and glycogen tank is maybe half full, right? So I have some room to indulge. And again, I'm not trying to burn fat, so I don't care if it goes all the way to 99%. As long as I don't get to 100% capacity, forcing my body to store fat, I'm okay. So I come home between 11 and one is when I typically get home from my workout and have my breakfast or brunch or meal, whatever it is. So I'll have that, and then the rest of the Saturday is pretty much open and dependent upon what I'm doing, right? If we're at a football game, um, I'll try to go to the game with a protein shake. Uh, again, trying to minimize the damage I do at the game. Always trying to be smart. If I go to uh, the movies later on, I'll do the same thing, try to have a protein shake later. So when I go to the movies, I have less popcorn, less candy, less soda. Um, but I don't really watch um, or try to fast or try to avoid carbs uh, on a Saturday, right? Because a Saturday uh, is the time when we're trying to enjoy ourselves. So hopefully we've done our work during the week to get to a point in the week where we can indulge and not have this day necessarily be a win for us, right? We don't want it to be a loss, right, where our body stores fat, but we, we hopefully have one one or two days of the week and hopefully have not lost any days during the week meaning we didn't gain any fat and now we're in a position where okay we can make sure we have some things we enjoy uh kick our feet up a little bit have some wine have some bread uh, have some beer have some pizza maybe uh, but only if we know it's not going to put our uh, glycogen levels at risk of overflow right so that's why I suggest that we work out on a Saturday right I prefer a Saturday because typically if we don't if we go if we go Friday night fun Saturday afternoon morning and evening fun that's a long time frame for us to indulge and potentially get our glucose levels high right there's gonna be a long window either way right for me it's it's Saturday to Sunday right but Sunday usually it's not as much fun in the evening, right? You're not going out probably because you have work. You're probably going shopping for food. So you're doing something probably mid-afternoon to early evening on Sunday that's going to stop all the fun. Whereas Saturday, that could go forever. So I prefer to get some glycogen depletion activity, i.e. a workout in on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon to bring those levels down so that we can enjoy the rest of Saturday and the early parts of Sunday, right? Knowing that we've already enjoyed Friday, all right? So because of that, I can have fun Saturday. And then and then Sunday, I'll get into in my next video, is a matter of just managing where I was at, right? If, if, I was, if I'm high still and I kind of know I'm going to have some junk, then I'll do a quick workout, something small to get rid of some of the glycogen, or I'll fast longer. On Sunday uh, but we have to be mindful guys of the fact that our body does not care what the reason is right if glucose levels get full our body will store fat period so it doesn't matter that you had a long week at work and you deserve to enjoy yourself it doesn't matter that um, you can't work out because your ankle hurts it doesn't matter that it's your anniversary or it's a birthday party or it's your son's playoff game whatever if you don't manage your glucose and glycogen storage your body will store fat and that's fat that many many people have a very hard time getting getting off 
or burn it off. So if you know it's hard to get off, then the first step in this process is to not store it, right? Not to not store body fat, all right? So let's be mindful of that, all right? So my schedule is pretty plain again on Saturdays. 6 a.m. wake up, right? 6.15 or so I do my water and my ketones, right? Very simple, right? 6 a.m. wake up, 6.15, water, and then ketones, right? 7.30ish to about 10, I'm drinking my BCAs, right? My branch chain amino acids. Those are the building blocks, again, that your body uses to repair and build lean muscle. So knowing, knowing I'm going into a workout, I make sure that I give my body what it needs to um, accelerate the process of getting those muscles prepped and prepared and repaired as fast as possible, all right? And then I come home, and while my body's still in the state of, of maximum burn, right, of maximum fuel usage, uh, we call that EPOC, again, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, the afterburn. Your body's burning more fuel per second. That's when you want to have your carbs, right? So we come home, have a bagel usually. Uh, I have two. Uh, but whatever you've been craving during the week, that's a great time to do it after your morning workout on a Saturday. So I, I'll do, you know, a higher, a much higher carbohydrate meal than I might do otherwise. Uh, I'll do that between 11 and 1, usually, when I get home. Um, and then the rest of the day, again, I'm managing. I'm managing it based on how hard I worked. I'm managing it based on what my weight was after I ate the, the bagels. I'm managing it based on what I have planned for Sunday that might take me over. Um, but that's your day to kind of, kind of, you know, have fun, but be careful. Because more people uh, will gain fat over that Saturday or Sunday in a weekend than during the week. And as I said before, you can't come back Monday and burn off that fat that you stored, right? You're gonna burn off the glycogen that's stored. Uh, but when your body went over in glycogen storage and stored body fat, that fat is gonna be hard to get to. It's been shipped off to, for storage in the fat cells and, and it's gonna be hard to tap into and get off. Uh, so. You know, we should just not store that, right? The first step is to not ever put our body in a position to store fat, all right? So, hope that was helpful. Uh, I'll go over Sunday next, uh, but it's, it's pretty simple, guys. It's a matter of just, you know, being smart about when you eat carbs, you know, making sure you, you train effectively. Not, not a lot, necessarily. I train three and a half times a week, uh, but I train effectively. I train to burn through glucose and glycogen. And it's not a matter of how often or how long I train. It's a matter of how much power and, and energy I, I force my body to use. Uh, and if you do that, then, and, then you can eat things you want at certain times of the week and keep all those cravings at bay. All right? So I uh, hope that was helpful. And I will, I will film the Sunday one next, and we will talk soon. All right, guys. Coach Bobby saying take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.